Hi guys, greeting to my aviation family. Welcome to my channel, P Winger, where I learn with you what's new and interesting in the aviation world. And I am Ravish Mandla. So today I wanted to start this video with a sense of gratitude. I wanted to thank each and every one of you for taking out time to watch my previous video. To the people who called, texted me, commented on my YouTube channel, as well as on my Insta page. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Chalbas, you like it? As an airline pilot, I assure you that all pilots are aware of the fact that flight safety always comes first. That being said, when we travel as passengers, we judge the pilot on the basis of how he or she lands. The smoother, the better. Let me tell you one thing: pilots are also aware of this passenger myth, and at times they try to achieve the same. Myth, you heard it right. Therefore, today I'm going to try to explain you the title of today's video: What is a smooth landing? So let's get it started. Jokes off. So what exactly is a smooth landing? To understand this, we should know the basic meaning of a landing in the first place. Landing is one of the last phases of flight in which the pilot brings the airplane down to the runway safely within specific parameters depending on type of the aircraft. These parameters are extremely important for a pilot to perform a good landing. And these parameters are approach a good approach will eventually lead to a good landing. Flare at the right time. Landing within the touchdown zone. This is very important for the topic that we are about to discuss today. At times, pilot without realizing, in order to perform a smooth landing, land ahead of the touchdown zone, which is a very major safety concern. As the distance left to stop the aircraft is reduced, then there is wind limitation. Runway limitation, whether the runway is dry or wet, upslope, downslope, adequate use of deceleration devices like air brakes, auto brakes, reverse thrust. I can go on and on, but if I dive into this, the topic of the video changes from what is a smooth landing to how to pull off a smooth landing. So let's not deviate from the topic and let's come down to what is a smooth landing. Technically, there is no such term as smooth landings. It's just a lingo made by aviators, depending on how soft or smooth the touchdown is. But there might be something to determine how smooth the landing is. And for that, we need to understand what gravity is. So gravity. Birds and bees were supposed to be flying using the medium of air. In the last century, mankind entered the era of flight. And gravitational pull became more important. That is, what goes up? must come down. Currently we are all subjected to 1G that is force acting from head to toe is 9.8 meter per second square or 9.8 newton. When an aeroplane flies it also roughly maintains 1G. However since the plane is utilizing the third dimension that is vertical acceleration there are various G forces that act on our body. During a turn or a hard landing, you may feel that you're getting into your seat. That is the force acting from head to toe could be anywhere between 1.5 to 2 Gs. In a layman's term, a force of 2 G acting on your body would make you feel that your weight is actually twice of your current weight. For example, let's say if your weight is 60 kgs and you're undergoing a 2 G force for a small period of time, that means you would feel 120 kgs. On a lighter note, these days I am feeling a little bit heavy and it has nothing to do with G factors or load factors. That's just because I am not working out and I am eating a lot. Similarly in air pockets or coming down of a roller coaster, you may feel butterflies in your stomach. That's because you are feeling weightlessness. And at this time the force of pressure is from toe to head. And these conditions where the force is less than 1G are called as negative Gs. And this could be anywhere between 0 to minus 0.5 G. But why am I telling you this? Because during landings, aeroplanes land between 1.1 to 1.8 G. Sometimes even greater than 1.8 G. 
even though the aircraft is designed to withstand even much higher g-loads during landing. Anything above 1.8 g is considered to be a hard landing. Closer to 1.8 g is considered to be a firm or a positive landing. Now the most important part. Closer to 1.1 g is deemed to be a smoother landing by passengers or as one may say is a smooth landing. But for aviators or pilots, if you are landing between 1.1 to 1.8 g, these are good landings and if we are maintaining these parameters, we are okay. Now the question pops up, is smooth landing always the best option? Well picture this, if in your house the floor is wet and you have to go from one room to another room and the distance between these two rooms is very less, would you run on the wet floor? or rather keep each and every step of yours carefully and firmly so that you don't slip. Because in the back of your mind you know the friction is less on the floor because of the wetness. Similarly, if we talk about landing on a wet runway or a shorter runway, the pilot will focus on safety first than performing a smooth landing. In fact, the principle of conservation of momentum comes here into play. The pilot will slightly perform a firmer landing, if I may say to take the impact from the ground to stop the airplane. And in this case, the pilot has to be extremely vigilant about applying the brakes at the right time and how much to brake. Because too much braking can also cause skidding or runway excursion. So next time, when we are traveling as passengers and during a rainy weather or a turbulent weather, pilot makes a firmer landing. We should actually appreciate the pilot for bringing the aircraft safely on the ground as he or she had to keep several parameters in mind just to bring that aircraft safe and without violating the norms of regulatory authorities. But that being said, in order to perform a smooth or a good landing or as we say it back in the flying club days, chick landing, it takes a lot of accuracy, skill, experience and a lot of shouting from your instructor. Fight the pilot! You are going like this all the time! So guys, I hope you like this video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, not the bottle. For now, just press the like button down there. Subscribe to my channel. That means a lot to me and it kind of makes me feel that what I'm doing is actually worthwhile. To be honest, through these videos, I just want to bring some value. As we are learning to be good pilots, let me know. If you've got any doubts regarding aviation or you want to know something about aviation, comment below and remember it's all about attitude if you learn good you fly good. see you in the flight deck